objects under the influence of air resistance. So remember earlier in chapter 4, we talked about the kinematics of objects undergoing circular motion. We said when a, a car is going or around a circle or any other object, even if its speed is not changing, we said, we said that it's uh, still accelerating, right? And it's a centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. <clears throat> and then we said on top of that, if it has a tangential acceleration, maybe it's accelerating along the tangential direction. Then therefore, it has a total acceleration uh, that is at an angle like that, right? So in that chapter, we analyzed the kinematics of circular motion because we weren't worried as much about what are the forces that are causing this thing to go in a circle, right? So in this chapter, we talk about what are the forces that are causing uh, this motion. In most of the examples that we will do, we will assume that the tangential acceleration is zero. So we'll assume that the object is going around a uniform circular motion, and we will just concentrate on the centripetal acceleration. So um, we're going to say the when an object is uh, going around the circle, the sum of the forces on it must be equal to mv squared over r. Okay, some of the forces on it must be equal to mv squared over r. So pretty much this first half of this chapter, we deal with different kinds of circular motion that are caused by different forces. For example, you could have a string uh, uh, an object at the end of a string, and you could be turning the string maybe at an angle even, and the, obj the, the, the object is going around the circle like this. And you, could, you should be able to analyze that. For example, if you're given the velocity of the object and its mass, you should be able to find the angle here. Or if you're given the angle, you should be able to find the velocity or if the problem asks you for the period of the motion, you should be able to find its period. So either way. Um, so that's, the, that's a string type of situation. Another kind of situation is like a car going around the, um, a turn. The car could be going around the turn uh, on unbanked curve. And let's say the car is uh, coming out at you here. So we're looking at an uh, end view here. I should draw the tires this way. Let's say the car is coming out towards you, making a turn, and then going back in. You see? OK, so the car is going like that. At the top, uh, th uh, this will be a side view. This is actually, this we could call this a front view. And uh, this is the rear view. The top view will look like this. This will be a top view of what the car is doing, right? So we might ask a question such as, uh, if the static coefficient of friction between the car and the road is, let's say, 0.8, how fast can the car go? What's the maximum that it can go before it starts to slide? Okay. Then I can take that car and put it on a bank co uh, curve like this. And I can ask the same question. I can say, now how fast can it go before it begins to slide? And then you'll see over there that uh, uh, there will be a cushion of values that it can go at. Uh, so this is, uh, this, is the, this, is kind of, uh, this is one kind. This is a car. And then another one, it's a, those are, that's called the bank curve. Then the other type of circular motion we'll do is like vertical circular motion, like a railroad, uh, like a roller coaster, I mean going like this, like this, 
This is the kind of roller coaster I give, I call this one the Colossus roller coaster, like the Colossus ride in Magic Mountain. This, this kind of roller coaster ride is one where you always stay on top of the track, okay, like this. So I'll ask questions such as, how, what's the maximum velocity that the roller coaster can have there? What's the maximum it can have there? If it has half that velocity, what will your apparent weight be? If it has one third of that velocity, what will your apparent weight be? You know, all kinds of variety of questions on that. Then there's the revolution type roller coaster where the ride goes like this and this one is inverted. And it goes up and then this way. So I'll ask similar questions about that. What's the fastest it should go there? What's the slowest it should go there? If it has double that speed, what's your apparent weight? Stuff like that. That pretty much exhausts the variety of, these are the, all the variety of circular motions that we'll deal with. We'll deal with. So this, this, this chapter will be fun in the sense that uh, you'll, have, uh, you'll really learn the physics of uh, roller coaster rides. Now in high school, typical high school physics courses, what another thing that they do is they take their students uh, or, um, to a field trip. They go to Magic Mountain, okay? I don't know, have you guys done that? They take them to Magic Mountain or something, and then they, they do physics projects there, and uh, they can even have them uh, analyze the physics uh, of what's going on there. That would be a good extra credit opportunity, huh? Go to a roller... Um, one of these places, take a scale with you and sit on it when you're on the ride. I know everyone's going to think, everyone's going to think you're weird. Right? Sit on it and then, or maybe uh, step, put it under your feet and then uh, take a video of it as the weight is changing below, before your feet, right? Uh, below your feet. And then you should see that the normal force below your feet is changing as the roller coaster is doing different thing, right? Then take a timeline of that and then plot it and see if it fits the equation. You want to do extra credit? Okay, we'll talk about it later. We'll negotiate something. <clears throat> okay, so let's do one, let's start out with the string type of situation. <clears throat> 